Hi guys, welcome back to another Hugh Jeffries video. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at fixing a common Apple Watch issue where the display falls off. This appears to affect early models of Apple Watches, such as my original 2015 model. At first, it might be thought that the display adhesive has loosened over time, but this is actually caused by the inbuilt battery. In 2019, a resident of New Jersey in the United States proposed a class action lawsuit over this issue. I wasn't able to find any update on this, however based on my own experiences of taking this watch into an Apple store, I was told they would replace the device if it was less than 4 years old, which was a reasonable offer. Mine was a day off 4 years at the time, but I declined the offer. This might sound like a strange thing to have done, but it didn't feel ethically right for me to throw away something that still works, which has a small issue that I could fix. If we take a look inside the watch, you can see the battery is located at the bottom. Pressing on it, you can see it is expanded. It may only be a few millimeters, but this is enough to dislodge the display. The screen cannot be reattached as the battery causes it not to sit flat. If you have an Apple Watch with an expanded battery and are outside the replacement period or would rather fix it than have it replaced, it can be done for less than $8. We will only need two replacement parts for this repair a new battery, and some adhesive to reattach the display. These parts can be found online at varying prices. I paid $6.60 for my new battery, and $0.60 cents for the adhesive. Getting started with our watch, I can lift the display out of the way. You could remove it entirely to provide you with more space to work, however it's not necessary. I can then pry out the old battery using a plastic spudger. Once it's loose, there's one cable that I'll need to disconnect. It's connected to another cable, so it's a little bit tricky to get unplugged. The next thing I'll need to do is get the new battery reinstalled, which is just as easy as removing it. I can push the battery cable through to the outside of the watch. This will make connecting our new battery a little bit easier. After removing the protective film from the adhesive, I can carefully fold it back inside the watch and we can test it out to see if it works. At first, nothing appeared on screen, but it's been in storage for a very long time. So I tried connecting the watch to a charger, and sure enough, it fired up without any problems. I left it charging for about an hour or two and came back to a watch that is now fully functioning off of its own battery, which of course is no longer expanded. The last thing we'll need to do is reattach the display panel. I'll power down our watch and continue by cleaning off any residual glue that was left behind. I found the best way of achieving this was to pull up the adhesive as a whole rather than scraping away at it. However, you need to be cautious of the force touch gasket underneath. If this becomes damaged, it will need to be replaced. It can also easily become unstuck. If this happens, you'll need some adhesive to reattach it. With our old adhesive all removed, it's time to get our new adhesive in place. It's already pre-cut to size, so all I need to do is line it up and press it down into place. It can be a bit tricky to line everything up with the display still attached, and that is one disadvantage to taking a shortcut like I did and not detaching the screen. If you want to make this job a little bit easier, you can remove the display, but of course you'll need to try and reinstall those pesky screen cables afterwards. Using a spudger, I can press our new adhesive into place and use a pair of tweezers to lift up the protective film covering up our new adhesive. After doing that, our screen is now finally ready for installation. I can simply line everything up and press it down into place, making sure to apply firm pressure to all sides to ensure it's not only secured down into place, but can stop any dust or water from entering. With that, we're done. So this is it a cheap and easy repair that saved this Apple Watch from becoming e-waste. Most people wouldn't throw away a $600 traditional watch if the battery died, they'd take it into a jeweler to be repaired. This might be a smartwatch, but the concept of having it repaired over replaced should remain the same. Whether the battery expands or not, its need for replacement is inevitable. The only issue I have with this watch is the fact that I cannot pair it to my iPhone 6. Both the watch and iPhone were released in 2015, However, as the software on the watch has been updated, the two won't work with each other. Of course, the phone could be updated, however, based on my own experiences, this can significantly slow down a device. 
While Apple was willing to give me a new watch over the expanded battery, they wouldn't downgrade the software on this watch, telling me to update or get another device that would work with the watch. This is an issue faced by people buying secondhand Apple watches, as for example the Series 2 watch is compatible with the iPhone 5 or later. However, if the watch's software is updated using another device, it will no longer connect to an iPhone 5. As this one has been updated and requires iOS 10, I cannot link it to my iOS 8 iPhone 6 Plus. This issue could be totally avoided if they adopted the way of Android watches. The app can be updated separately to the whole device, so my Galaxy Watch will work on Android 5 or later. So whether you have the latest Samsung or Blackberry's first Android phone, it still works. Regardless, I'm happy to see this device back in a working state. And on that note, this has been a Hugh Jeffries video. If you like what you saw, hit that subscribe button and consider checking out the restoration playlist for more videos just like this one. And if you're looking for any tips or what tools I use to repair devices, be sure to check out my website, link for which is down in the description. That's all for this video and I'll catch you guys next time.